This is my lesson debrief for my microteach. So my questions are, how do you think the lesson went? What was the most effective part? And if there were one part that you might want to make more effective, what would it be? Well, overall, I think the lesson went pretty well. There was a little difference of opinion as to the length of time that I spent going over the equations in class. I realized that the uh, audience was full of math teachers. However, the lesson was geared towards 10th graders. Uh, students at this stage in their cognitive development require repetition and reinforcement and connecting it with previously established information in order for it to be reinforced in memory. Uh, I understand my instructor's comment about spending too much time, but in a high school, you really need to repeat things a lot of times to get their attention. Uh, feedback was mixed both ways, but generally indicated that the information was welcomed and it was a good review. Uh, why did you develop the lesson plan the way you did, and what did you hope to achieve with this lesson? Well, I originally developed the plan to get a specific idea across to students, and that was finding the equation of a tangent line to a circle. Uh, I pretty much set or tried to set the stage and the expectations of the lesson by prefacing it with, you know, this is uh, something that we've been studying the last couple of days on circles, and today we're going to be talking about tangent lines. And that gave me the information uh, that they had already learned, and again, I'm trying to tie it to new knowledge so that they can connect more information in their memory to help bring about a better memory uh, retrieval, so to speak. Uh, since I was severely limited on time, I tried to put as much information as I could into it. Um, how did you engage the students? Well, I first engaged the students with a discussion of things that they should already know about. What is the definition of a circle? What is a radius? What are parallel lines? What are perpendicular lines? That sort of thing, because I want to make sure that they have again, the requisite knowledge required to solve the problem that I'm going to present them. Uh, repeating by repetition, so to speak. Uh, the other thing was I introduced a false postulate into the crowd to see what kind of reaction that I was going to get uh, to give them information which they could not solve the task with. In other words, I wanted to force them to think about well, why would he be giving us this, this stuff if there weren't a solution to it? So the first approach was, what if you have a, the equation of a circle in the point? And we discussed how you solve that. The second one was, if you only have the center of the circle and a point, what, how do you solve the problem? The third one was a sort of a curveball, and it was, well, what if you only had the area of a circle and the point of tangency. And a discussion started among a couple of groups of students that says, yeah, you can do it, and they were trying to explain how to do it, and the other says they were explaining back and forth. That's where I think real learning takes place, but I couldn't let it go on forever because I had to keep to my time schedule, so I had to cut the uh, lesson short. I think, though, that that would have been interesting to let it play out for a little while, especially in a real classroom, because that's where learning actually really does take place. Um, and as usual, I try to engage my students by asking them lots of questions. Uh, did you incorporate a performance-based activity? And if so, describe it. Uh, I utilized a lesson quiz that worked very well for me in my last micro-teach. The error analysis is quite revealing. Uh, results that out of the 18 students, the mean was a 97, and the standard deviation was 4. Uh, the standard quiz, 72% of the class took, uh, did have two other scaffolded tests and uh, to see if it would help my data analysis any. Feedback from uh, one of the students indicated that um, they liked the assessment and thought it was a comprehensive model of the material that I taught. Uh, she was one of the ones that had a scaffolded assessment, and she liked it because it broke the problems into manageable steps and helped me to remember what process I needed to go through to find the answer. I think structuring an assessment that way could be very helpful for struggling students. 
So again, my intent was to see if the scaffolding was helping in any way. Uh, but since the class average was so high, it was really difficult to tell from the data that I had. Next question was uh, discuss the representations, the technology, visual models used in this lesson. In what ways were they effective in achieving your objective? And are there ways they might have been used more effectively? And are there any other options that I could use? Well, I continue to use Pre Prezi. I uh, really like it. And I find that working on the whiteboard is probably just as important as a Prezi is, if not more so. Working on the whiteboard is probably the staple of most math teachers, unless you have a, a whiteboard or a, one of the digital boards that actually work most of the time. I find that in most of the classes that I've attended or done an observation in, it, they work, but they're very quirky. Um, another advantage of Prezi. In my instructional technologies class, I had to create a website for my students. And in there, what I did was I started posting some of the Prezi that I've done. Uh, and looking back on it, it's like you can put in the Prezi and if a student has questions or didn't understand something in class, you can direct them to the website. They can go back over the notes at their own pace and clear up any misunderstandings that they had because the, everything's in there. So I, I really like Prezi, and I, I think you can use it very effectively when you're introducing new information. You don't have to use it all the time, but it certainly does dress up some of the information that uh, you want to present to your students. Uh, coming back to the whiteboard, I try to implement as much audio-visual information as I can to the students. Uh, I always try to preface everything that I do by writing the formula on the board. I think it's very important to stress knowing what the formula is and why you want to use this formula over that formula. I have students in my high school who even now, a test is coming up uh, in two days and I was quizzing one of the students this morning and asked him what the point-slope formula was. I said, write it for me. And he says, I don't know what it is. Um, he didn't know what the slope formula was, but this is another reason why in my Prezi, again, geared towards this age kids, I put a lot of effort into making sure that we covered the material and repeated it as often as possible in order to get it to stick into their memory. For math teachers, it's a little different. All right. Um, did you stay with your lesson plan? And if uh, not, why did you change it and why? Uh, I found that I did stay within my lesson plan. Time was short. I had originally planned for 40 minutes, uh, but I had several more examples just in case I, I had time to get to them. And had I had those extra 10 minutes, uh, we would have done at least two more examples on the board. What would you have done differently or what would you have done the same? Uh, there were some mixed feelings on my reflection. I thought that for my intended lesson plan, audience, the material was relevant. Um, however, had I done it differently, I probably would have given them a, a quick warm-up on a couple of problems that involved a circle and a radius and then finding the slope of the radius. Uh, that might have freed up a little of extra time and might have helped me determine what their level was. But again, if I don't, if I'm if I'm teaching to my target audience, which is the high school kids that I'm working with now, they need the extra help. So uh, I think that would have been an alternate way to do it because, again, I prefaced it with, well, we've been working with circles over the last couple of days, so this stuff ought to be easy for you. Uh, what we often expect or anticipate responses from the group when we teach, what did the group respond as expected, and were there any unexpected responses? The group sort of did respond as expected. Uh, as I walked through the two examples showing the equation of the circle and how we find the equation of the rate of the, of the slope of the radius, uh, and then we found the point of tangency, and we walked through that example, I thought that went very well as expected. When we got to the question, again, this is, it all comes back to this. When we got to the question of, can you solve this problem knowing only the area of a circle and the point of tangency? I thought that was just 
that was that was the lesson for me. I thought that was just great because I know that there were some students in there that were convinced that why would he put it up there if there wasn't a solution for it? There must be a solution for it. Uh, and I think those students actually had to be convinced that that was not the case. Uh, did your lesson achieve its objectives? What did the group learn and how do you know? Well, I know that the group came out of there with a quick review of circles and tangent lines. I know that they could figure out the line of a tangent. I know that they could figure out the slope and they figure out a line, uh, the equation for a line. I know this because out of 18 students, eight students made 100 on the test, seven students made a 96 on the test. They would have made 100 had they circled their answers, which would have given me 15 out of 18 that made 100 on the test. One student made a 94. One student made an 85 from a cascading sign failure. They forgot to flip a sign. However, they worked the problem to completion and got the right answer. So I only counted off six points on that because uh, that was in the, my grading rubric. But had they had the correct sign, they would have gotten the correct answer. And then one student made a 45, didn't even attempt question two, so he was uh, the outlier of the group. Was, uh, was there a critical moment or turning point in the lesson for you? I uh, don't think there was a critical point during this lesson. Uh, classroom management went very well, and I think I kept the students on focus uh, when, when they were getting off topic. I kept them focused on the problem. Uh, what do you think of the RTH, RTM approach to teaching? Uh, I, I continue to like it. However, the educational psychology class that I'm taking now on the uh, psychology of the learner is very awesome. I'm learning a, a lot about memory, how to establish memory, how people generally establish getting things from working memory, from sensory perception into long-term memory, and uh, practicum is uh, supplying me with weekly reflections on the way I teach and the way I approach. So I'm learning a lot and RTM method is actually helping me a lot in this uh, profession. Areas for individual growth. Well, I did a better job of uh, not keeping my back to the students. Um, still working on trying to write to the side. Uh, being left-handed, I tend to write in front of the board because I print everything and it's very difficult for me to write like this with my hand up so that I don't run my sleeve through everything. Uh, it's just difficult for me to do that so I find myself writing a little bit and then pausing and checking the students to make sure that everybody's finished writing. Uh, that's one of the feedback from my mentor teacher said I need to give more time for students to copy things down. In this particular lesson, it didn't matter much because most everybody had that stuff memorized. They didn't need to write it down. So um, I think I did pretty well overall. So there's my lesson debrief. Um, thank you for your feedback. Thank you for everything, and uh, see you next time. Bye.